When you're in the hospital, where did it hurt the most? When it comes to pain, there's no blood test to show how much you're suffering. Doctors have few tools to objectively measure it and often rely on patients to rate it on a 0 to 10 pain scale. There is no objective barometer for us to be able to determine whether or not somebody has real pain or somebody is coming in and lying to us. So how do physicians respond when patients ask for pain relief? So where are you having pain? What we've seen over the past decade is a cultural shift and how doctors sort of respond to this request by just prescribing more and more opioids. Vicodin and Oxycontin have become the most commonly prescribed drugs in America and the most abused and misused. There is uh, a demand on the part of consumers that they be pain free and the expectation is that opiates are the only thing that can really kind of take the pain away. Public health experts say the culture of writing narcotics prescriptions for moderate pain, which began a decade ago, needs to be changed and doctors retrained. In 2007, Purdue Pharma was fined about $650 million for misrepresenting the safety of OxyContin. They stated that it was less addictive than other drugs and they marketed it improperly to physicians. Prescribing these drugs too soon, too often, and for too long puts patients and others at risk of addiction or overdose. It also leads to dozens and dozens and dozens of surplus tablets just sitting in their medicine chest. All too often those surplus pills are diverted and wind up in the wrong hands. Almost all of the opioids that are on the streets in the United States come from physicians practicing medicine in the United States. One in four high school students admit to misusing or abusing these medications. If someone had back pain or something, someone got into an accident, there would be prescribed painkillers and um, they would sell them at school. I do understand that pill use is part of the culture now in high schools for a large group of young people, and I'm just frightened by it. Another problem, doctor shopping. Patients going from doctor to doctor to obtain prescriptions. I think that there needs to be a system in place to help doctors monitor their patients. I favor states that put in place a confidential system whereby before I write a prescription for an opioid for the patient in front of me, I know whether other prescriptions have been filled in the last month by that patient with different doctors in different clinics. By June of 2014, New Hampshire is expected to have a drug monitoring system in place that will track prescriptions of heavily abused drugs. This monitoring program will provide us with access to that information if they've, you know, whether or not they've filled at another pharmacy. We could say, oh, CVS filled that, whereas now we don't have that information. The database will also alert physicians to a patient's substance abuse history. We don't know who is abusing their drugs, and so we have to treat everybody as if they're diverting or, or are addicted to their drugs. When it comes to prescribing narcotics, there's no way for doctors to know if their practice varies from their peers. We really don't know what our colleagues are doing. It's kind of like um, one's income or one's weight. It's just some, one of these things that we just don't really talk about. A survey is underway at Dartmouth-Hitchcock's Heater Road facility to help provide more guidance to physicians in prescribing opioids. Where doctors can see where their prescribing um, compares to the prescribing of the other people in their practice. I think it'll be very helpful. It's a, a chance to sort of self-regulate and to um, give people more information so that they can hopefully make better choices, uh, better choices and, and better medical decisions. The challenge for doctors? How to reduce painkiller abuse without cutting off access to those who really need them.